Hello, Ryan Miller here again. This is a new tutorial on how to create a puppet style rig in Unity 3D. Um, a puppet rig is a rig that uses a series of pieces um, trying to only rotate joints when necessary and avoiding translating joints um, and create a flash or toon boom style rig where we can take just a bunch of elements and rotate them around and move them. Um, I have a file here which is a, a cleric from King of Dragons that I've drawn in many different layers. You can see every single piece that I'd ever want to animate is here as its own layer. Um, and then in groups I have the major limbs. If I use the transform tool in any of these groups, you can see generally how I would animate this. Um, I would take a group in the hierarchy and I would rotate it. And then inside that hierarchy I can then rotate individual pieces to get even more uh, accuracy of animating and rotating. So when you're drawing your character for this, um, it's easiest if you draw with this kind of method from the get-go. If you're drawing in layers to begin with, um, you'll have an easier time. You'll have to spend less time going back and redrawing things. Um, the workflow I recommend is do a thumbnail or a rough of your character, and then as you start the detailing process, your, your final line work, your base colors, all that, those should happen in their own new layers. So we can't throw this into Unity just yet. Um, Unity is not going to recognize that layered Photoshop file um, the way we want it to. So what we're going to have to do for Unity is give it a square image with this character basically exploded amongst that square in what's called the Texture Atlas. Um, showing transform controls I find is especially useful for this because when we arrange this square it's not going to be like arranging a UV map. Um, everything's single object is going to need to be contained in a square. So we're not going to be able to cozy up two shapes uh, kind of Tetris style that fit near them because we're not chopping this up with precise polygons we're chopping this up into squares. Um, furthermore, since we're using a texture atlas, since it's going into a game engine, it's always better to work with square textures whenever we can. So I'm going to change the canvas size of my document just to a larger square version of what it is right now. So now we've got more room to work with. So take a minute, pull each object. Um, I recommend auto-select the layer and show transform controls. Um, pull each object apart. and lay it out inside a square. You notice when I do objects like arms and legs that they look pretty similar. Uh, the left arm and the right arm have some minor shading differences, and the hand is drawn differently. Aside from that, they're basically the same. So if you're looking to save time, you could use the same image for your front and back arm and your front and back leg. Okay. Um, I could spend more time arranging this to be a little bit better use of space. I think everything could be scaled up a little bit, or the image could be scaled down a little more to make better use of that space. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave everything where it is. So I'm going to save this out as a PNG. And I'm going to save it directly into my Unity folder. So I'll call him 2dguy.png. Okay, so jumping into Unity now, you can see my image has come in. So by default, any new PNG, JPEG, Targa, uh, whatever image format you use, will come in as a texture. Um, since we want to use Unity's sprite system, we don't want to keep this as a texture. We actually want to change it into a sprite to use the sprite system. Um, we are also using the sprite mode multiple, since there are multiple sprites inside this one image. Multiple will tell Unity that everything should be chopped up so that we can treat it individually. So I hit apply. There we go, we got our transparency, that's good. And now I'm going to open up the sprite editor. Sprite editor is a very, very nice feature of Unity. Um, we can chop up these pieces individually ourselves and give them names, or we can use the built in slice function. Um, automatic default settings are quite nice. 
um, slice and it will grab just about everything as a new piece. Um, I can see it missed the torso, but that's okay, I can do that myself. And here we have all of our pieces sliced up together. Oh, we got a little bit of a disparity here. This kind of thing here, see how I put these two a little bit too close together? So that the kind of heel of this foot is probably going to have some issues with the top, the knee of this other leg. Um, that's worth fixing now. That's not the kind of thing that I recommend you remind yourself to fix later. Um, this is one of those things where setup is really important and fixing things early on will save you a lot of hassle later. So let's move those two apart and resave this file. Okay, and we'll try that slice again. Now, on that same note I just mentioned, it's good to get everything processed as well as you can in here right now. Um, the main thing I'm speaking to at this point is setting pivot points and naming each piece so that we know what on earth they are later. Um, if we were to set our pivot points later on after we've arranged our whole rig together, um, those pivot points actually work as the center of the objects. So it would actually shift all the objects in our rig into undesired positions if we were to set our, position, uh, set our pivots after the fact. So make sure you set your pivots now. Um, the pivots are just going to be what you want these objects to rotate by. So stuff like uh, the lower arm with an elbow, you want it at the elbow joint. Uh, the upper arm with the bicep and tricep, you want it near the shoulder. Um, the hand at the wrist, the head near the neck, um, these kind of uh, loincloth uh, drapery should be near the top, and so on and so forth. Okay, and then I'm just going to go name every piece. I recommend using the naming convention um, of a, a prefix that says which side of the body this is. I tend to use stage direction for, for names here, so um, what I'm seeing as the character's left arm, I will call the left arm, even though technically it's the character's right arm from the character's point of view. This is just so that when it appears on screen, it's never going to appear backwards on screen, so we're, we're going to see it as the left. We'll just call it left because that's what we see. Um, and of course I'm using C for center. If you forget what pieces are, you can always jump back into your scene, uh, your Photoshop file, which should have your layers named. If you get really stuck, um, you can go back to your character all put together and reference that image too. My pieces look a little bit weird on their own. Um, in fact, I think I want to change this pivot point a little bit. Still not too late to change pivot points because I haven't put the rig together yet. This is the front leg. Yeah. Okay, it looks like everything's named. 
Again, the important part is that everything gets their pivot point set here, because once we assemble the rig, if the pivot point changes, it will actually move our objects in the rig. If I forget to name something in here, that's less of an issue, because I can go back and name it without breaking anything. Uh, make sure you hit apply. It's a little bit hidden in the bar up here when you're done. Um, that might take a minute. It's basically just saving out uh, new images from this image. It's doing all the slicing. So when we jump back into our project view and look at our sprite now, we can exp uh, expand it and see all these different pieces.